insanity. Freak! Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Abu Garcia for life. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. No top technique show would be complete without looking at a crankbait. And this particular crankbait has been a go-to of mine for years and years. And that's basically the live target hunts for center crankbait. And, and it's the reason why is in its very name, hunts for center. This crankbait is constantly hunting. And what I mean by that is it's not movement through the water in this direction. It's a side to side movement that drives fish crazy with this. When this bait comes down, it, it covers a lot of that swath. I mean, it's not moving two inches side to side. It's literally moving a foot to a foot and a half. And every time it hits something, it really just, it, it hunts for center. It's always trying to get back to center and it's always kicking it off. And if you watch a lot of footage of fish following crankbaits and that sort of thing, they basically strike, you know, with that weird movement. I mean, if it stays like this for a long time, they might follow it for a while, but usually when it kicks off, when it does something just not normal, that's when you get those strikes. And uh, Hunts for Center is a bad mamma jamma, especially around rocks and obstructions where you can run it through, where it's gonna bang off. And one of the things I did that definitely put the odds in my favor when I'm fishing this bait is I try to get long, long casts on a crankbait. And this Revo EXD is specifically designed for long casts. And if you really wanna to stop to think of how important a long cast is, let's do some math. I mean, I, I know I don't look like a mathematician, but a mile, a mile is actually 5,200 feet. So basically, if you think about it, if this reel right here allows me to cast just 10 feet further, only 10 feet, and I average, you know, 520 casts in a day, that's an extra mile without making one extra cast. And it's little things like that that turn the odds in your favor. Long casts, a bait that hunts for the center, generally end with one trunch charm. Oh, it's not good. I didn't do it well. I didn't even think I got better at this. I don't eat it. I got some nice. Oh. You dirty little nasty. Don't. There it is, just followed me up. Look at you dirty little nasty. Get down to her. Fish. Oh, good one too. Come here, dude. Oh, just sitting right on that transition. Come here. Look at that dude right there. Oh, that's a pretty good way to start your day. But that's pretty average fish for Beauchene Wilderness Lodge. Unbelievable. These big fish are all stacked right on the transition, and my hook is stuck in my arm. Yeah, it's a facts and fishing episode, all right. 
Honey, call the kids! The idiot stuck himself in the arm already! Potentially get this out and look like not such a bonehead? Probably not. Got it out of my shirt. Got it out of the fish. Whew! And we got this show started. Gonzo. This segment is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. Well, it doesn't matter what year you tune into Facts of Fishing, a jerk bait it is always one of our top tactics. I mean, it is really underutilized by a lot of anglers. I mean, it's a spring bait for a lot of anglers but you can catch them on them all year long. And in just about every single season, you see me do a jerk bait show. First of all, get yourself one of these so you don't hook yourself in the butt when you're traveling with that rod. And how smart does that look? Clear, so I can actually see what bait is in there. I don't have to pull off five of them until I find the right bait. But this little jerk bait, whether it's large mouth or small mouth or, you know, even pike, walleye, you name it. I mean, I've caught them on a jerk bait. It's all about the pause. But the thing that you want to remember is the pause is always longer the colder the water is. You know, if I'm fishing in 55 degree water, 50 degree water, I may pause that bait for up to 10 seconds. Literally count it. One, two, three. I can't even count that long right now because I'm just that too, too, too hyper. But in this fall, you want to do that. You are, are in the colder water, not just the fall, the spring. It's not a time of year. It's a temperature of water. In colder water, you want to pause that bait. And that's why I love these live target jerk baits. I mean, look at all, I mean, you look at that in a package and you just look at it from one side. But if you look at this bait on the side, you see all of those little ridges and turns of the different bait fish. Those are light marks. And that's when that bait sits there in the water and it just kind of glistens as it floats and different, you know, light shoots off of it. Just like if you've ever seen, you know, a bait fish swim beside you, you know, a school of bait fish swim right beside you. You see it flickering and that's exactly what you see with this bait. But the general rule is simple. Always pause it longer in colder water. As the water gets warmer, you can work it a lot more erratically, do a lot more things with it. When it comes to color, I'm really simple. I'll go with basically two types of colors. When it's cloudy, I always go with a bait fish color, whether it's cloudy or sunny. But when it's cloudy, I'm gonna go with a more matte bait fish color. So it's kind of a, a duller bait fish color. Once that sun comes out, I'm gonna start going with my silvers and golds metallic, something that's gonna give me a little flash. Those are little tips that'll help a jerk bait bite stay good all year long. this on the leaving it on the pause to it looks like a better one. Oh, it's a big one oh it's a giant it is a giant it's a river potamus oh get down this is a giant giant fish for the river you got to be real careful when you're fishing in current like this when you're pulling this fish you got to remember it's not just your pressure you're pulling against the current and that can pull that bait right out of the fish's mouth. Oh, look at that fish right there. I mean, that's not a giant out on the lake, but for the river, that's a pretty good small jaw right there. You can see from each of these fish how important it is to have a three hook bait this time of year, just simply because, I mean, they're just swatting at it and it just ups your odds. I mean, I am not a wise man. But more hooks mean more opportunities. The rods in today's episode were threaded using the RTD rod threading device. last one to ever let you know but big giant swim baits catch big giant fish i mean we've always heard that that big baits catch big fish but the swim bait is a bait that requires commitment i mean it's it's the kind of bait where you're 
you have to be willing to say, I don't care if I only get five bites, two bites all day, but they're going to be big, giant bites. And when swim baits first started coming out, I mean, you had all sorts of crazy actions. What makes the big live target swim baits so good is they don't have that crazy action. They actually have spent time studying the bait fish that they're imitating. And when you reel it back, it's just a very subtle little doom, doom, doom. But if you see how a bait fish swims through the water, if you see how a juvenile trout swims through the water, these baits swim exactly like that. And the key with a swim bait, in my opinion, is you want to be able to get a very long cast. The longer the cast, the more bites you're going to get. Because unlike a jerk bait, a swim bait doesn't have you know, that triggering effect. You'll see a lot of fish that slowly follow behind it, just looking at it. It takes them a little while to commit because there's not something happen where they think it's gonna get away. It's extremely natural, but that's also why you hook a lot of fish right down their yap, because when they commit, they commit. You know, they'll track behind that bait and <gasps> inhale it. So whether you're throwing, you know, big swim baits for, for, for giant, giant bass or giant, giant northerns, it really is an incredible, incredible way to fish. It's the closest thing to hunting that you can do on the water. I mean, because you're really just removing a lot of the factors that you get in fishing and just committing to one bait. And you wanna make it look as natural as possible. You're not looking for all the bites. You're just looking for those kind of bites that people post on the social medias. Really, life has become that, let's be honest, I mean, it's not about what you do in real life. It's just about likes and did big fish get more likes and hopefully you like this tip. Try big swim baits. You will catch them. Longer cast, steady retrieve and commitment. That's what it takes to catch them on a big giant swim bait. Areas you want to key in on when throwing a big swim bait. Weed lines, weed edges, you know, shorelines. And even fishing from shore, it doesn't sound like a bait that you would want to use from the shore because it's kind of just, you know, this big giant bait. But the cool thing about it is you can fish it in all different depths. So even if you're fishing from shore and it's gradually getting shallower as it comes back up, just slowly lift your rod as it comes back up and that bait will move higher in the water column and you can work it in all different depths. Unlike a, a jig where you're basically on the bottom or a crankbait, once it gets down there, you're on the bottom. A swim bait is very versatile in different depths, but you definitely want to key in in all those areas where big fish live. Edges, whether it's a shade edge, a weed edge, a rock edge, get that bait near an edge and it'll get eaten. I know how to catch you. He's swimming to work. My bait, there he is, giant, giant. Oh, it's a freak. It is a freakzilla. Oh, no big deal. First fish here. <laughs> Look at that thing. You want to come on the left here? If sure. you can. Oh, that's not a bad way to start your trip right there, I'm going to tell you. Oh. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. First fish in the trip. Um, we're at that point in the day where you're like, do we end it right here? I mean, how awesome is that first fish of the trip? I got him. Oof, I got him. Look at that dude there. That is how you want to start your trip. Whew, Cree Lake Lodge. You're going to hear me say that a lot because we traveled a long distance in search of these big nasties. And you can see why. Yeah, gone. Not a bad start. 42 incher, not bad. Pretty good way to start the trip. You know, when Drop Shot first came out, it really seemed a lot more technical than it is. I mean, really all it is is you tie a polymer knot, leave your tag end really long, feed it back through the hook, and put a weight at the bottom. That's drop shot. 
Why it's so effective is because if you think about it, most baits, the weight drives the bait. With this, the weight's below it and the bait actually can sit very naturally and, uh, and you can adjust that. We've never drop shotted before. It really seemed a lot more technical than it is. Basically, all you do is tie your hook on with a polymer knot, leave a long tag end, and then you take that tag end, and here's the key. Rather than just cut it off, you take that tag end and you feed it through the eye, back through. That's one of the most important things, feeding that through, because now my hook wants to stand out. No matter how I move that bait, that hook's gonna stand out. And that's really a drop shot rig. I'm gonna try a little different weight here. See these, uh, a different shape. You know, normally I'll throw a pencil weight, but I'm getting hung up a lot. And a little wider weight at times can make a big difference. And all you do to put your drop shot weight on, straight up, tie a knot on the bottom, old school granny knot, and just feed your line through there. I'm not tying the weight on, because I don't want to lose my whole rig. If I get buried in something, I want to just lose the weight. And that's why I just tie a knot there, run it through, and then tighten it back down. That's the bad boy right there. It's a max scent flatworm, and you can see how having that hook rigged right when that bait gets in the water, I mean, it's got unbelievable action, but really what makes these baits so special is its max scent. And, and what that means, it's confusing to a lot of people. I mean, what, what is power bait, what is max scent? Well, straight up, the difference between power bait and max scent is if you can think about it, power bait is taste. So when a fish grabs it, when a fish comes up and goes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He puts it in his mouth like that, he tastes it. So it holds on for an incredibly long time. Makes sense, right? Now here's where Max Scent is different. It is actually a scent as opposed to a taste. And I guess that's where it gets confusing. You know, Power Bait for years has been talked about scent, but it is a taste. This is actually a scent. So not only does it taste good to the fish, but it puts a scent field around it. It's not just something that they taste. It's something that goes around that area. And uh, if you look at the results of this bad boy this year on the Bassmaster Elite Series, evidently scent matters. And Max Scent is catching a bunch. So if I throw on a lead weight and I switch to a Wu Tungsten drop shot, all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. It's kind of like switching from monofilament line to braided line. Things just got more sensitive. You just knew what you could feel. And, and that's really what tungsten is to drop shot. It's one technique that, that I try never to use lead with. I'll use tungsten every single time, just because you feel more. And it's not just about the fish. It's about the areas you're fishing. You know, you spend time in the water with someone like Simon Frost, who is the king of Lake Erie, in my opinion. You, you can look at it and it looks like he's just drifting in the middle of nowhere. But when you look below the water, there's subtle transitions. You know, he's working that bait between sand and rock. And that area, that transition where the sand and rock meets, that's where the fish are sitting. And you'll never feel it with lead. But you drag a tungsten weight over there, you feel the mushy sand, and then all of a sudden, doo, 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 you know you're on the rock. Not only does it allow you to feel fish, but allows you to feel the fish habitat and allows you to be a little more educated and throw that bait where those fish are living. Feeling is everything. I mean, I should have listened to my grade eight girlfriend. I mean, feeling is everything. I haven't figured out the emotional feelings yet, but I'm very good at feeling bass. There you go. There we go. Good job. Mm. Double head. Oh, almost double header. I blew it. Oh, they're so strong. Dude. Nope, didn't blow it. Doubled up. I know. This is just fighting like horses right now. Lake Erie, no big deal. Oh man, look how strong that fish is. Whoa. All right, I think we got a strong one. Maybe we got a walleye. Dude, whatever this is, it's bulldogging. Not sure what we have. That looks like a good fish. It feels like a good one, it feels heavy. Mine's not heavy. 
Oh, on the Stop other side there. of the bowl. Oh, he's a good one. That's good. Man. Look at the size of that piece. That's oh, a big fish. Dude, oh, I'm not sure I'm yeah. big. Oh, I am. Man, look at that thing. Oh. This is just embarrassing. Beast. Fish like that are what makes Lake Erie my favorite smallmouth body on earth. And I know there's a world of people arguing, hey, Malax is better, so-and-so's better. <sighs> the best part about it is we are living in a time when you can argue about which is the best smallmouth bass fishery because they are loaded. And Simon is hooked up Got just like one. that. He's a good fish, but he's not a, not a giant. There you Very well-behaved fish. Yet he just realized he's not happy. Go. No.